If you have a tendon pain or a tendinopathy, you're going to want to watch this whole video through. Tendinopathies are really confusing and frustrating things to deal with. So in this video, we're going to clarify what's going on. Hi, I'm Lachlan and I'm one of the physios here at Adelaide West Physiotherapy. And I have a keen interest in working with tendons and how best to help people through their tendinopathies. So what is a tendinopathy? In broad terms, it's a load intolerance issue. And what I mean by that is, is that the load placed on the tendon is more than that tendon is capable of. So it can occur over a short period of time. It might be like the start of a new exercise or a sharp increase in activity that's very different to what you had been doing previously or over a long period of time progressing certain exercises or activities or whatever it may be that is over and above the level that the tendon is capable of, of dealing with when a load is placed onto a tendon, as long as it's within the capabilities of the tendon, it will heal up, recover, and respond to that load. The more consistently that load is provided with a good period of time and rest in between, the better that tendon is able to deal with that added load and over time you can see progression and increase in strength and tolerance to that tendon. However, as mentioned before, if that load is not provided in a way that's consistent, you can then start to lead to this tendinopathy. The tendon issues can either occur in the the tendon itself, either at the mid portion or the end portion, or it can occur to the sheath or the protective lining around the tendon, and they all need to be considered because they all need to be treated slightly differently. So some of the common causes of tendinopathy include overload or overuse, injury, particularly with a direct blow to the tendon, or certain medical conditions can lead to tendinopathy. So particularly when we're talking about overload and overuse, we're talking about the most common cause of tendinopathy. This can occur in a number of different ways, but particularly it's sort of broken down into either acute or chronic overload. So when we're talking about acute, you're usually talking about something that's occurring over a couple of days or over a week. So for instance, if you're doing more stuff in the backyard or if you're doing some more stuff around the house, where you're doing a lot of activity and a lot of repetitive activity that's very different to what you're used to. So thinking about doing a lot of digging in the backyard, if you're doing a lot of gardening, that can lead to a tennis cell and that can happen quite quickly. So that's what we would consider an acute overload. When we're talking chronic overload, we're talking about something that's occurring over three, four weeks. So usually when you're talking about something like either taking up exercise or taking up a new exercise. So if you take up running for the first time and your body's not really adapting to it all that well, you can end up with uh, hamstring tendinopathies or patella tendinopathies or taking up a different type of exercise. So if you were a runner previously and you decided to take up something like F45 where there's a lot more jumping and moving and different sort of activities that your body's not used to compared to something like running. And that can lead to a tendinopathy because your tendons aren't responding or adapting to that load as well as you'd like them to. When you're talking about some of the other different causes, we're looking at tendon injury. It's usually more of a direct blow. So during sport, if you get a knock to your Achilles or if you get a knock to your elbow or whatever it may be, it can prompt a tendinopathy response. There are certain medical conditions that can lead to you having more of a possibility, more of a chance of a tendinopathy. You're talking about things like obesity, high cholesterol, hypertension, menopause, conditions that raise the general inflammation inflammatory response around the body. So it's not a high level inflammatory response, it's just increasing the low grade inflammatory response around the body that can just mean that we're more likely to bring on a tendinopathy. So there's certain signs and symptoms that we'll look for as a physio to start to gain an understanding if we're working with a tendinopathy. And the first thing we're gonna ask about is how you're experiencing your pain. So tendon pain can be a little bit interesting, particularly in the early stages, because there's a bit of a warming up phenomenon to it. So when you start certain activities that aggravate your tendon, you'll notice that it'll bring on pain. But as you start to warm up the tendon and progress through activity, that pain seems to disappear. The pain can restart when you stop that activity. That is quite common in early stages of tendinopathy. What we tend to find in late stages of tendinopathy is rather than having this on-off uh, concept with pain where you, it's coming on with certain activities, what we'll tend to find is that the pain will be there at a low level quite consistently and then will increase as you're starting certain activity. It might level out again like you would with that warming up principle we were talking about before and then drop back down to the resting pain. When we're looking to diagnose a tendinopathy, not only are we discussing how your pain is occurring, there's a few other things that we'll look at physically to determine whether there's a tendinopathy. So the first thing we're looking for is, is that pain increasing as we increase 
increase the load on the tendon. So for instance, if we're looking at Achilles, we might find that on a seated calf raise, you may not experience pain, but when we get you standing, or even when we get you hopping, you start to notice the pain get more and more as we increase the load on the tendon. Some of the other things that we'll tend to notice is that there'll be tenderness around the area. Sometimes it can feel a little bit swollen, but the most important thing that we're looking for when we're diagnosing a tendon is that we're asking about if there's that sort of warming up type concept with pain, and if there's pain when we increase the load on the tendon. So what are some of the common sites of tendinopathy? So I'll start from the top and work my way down. So particularly when we're talking in and around the shoulder, it definitely can be tendon components in and around the shoulder. And also we can have tendon issues with the long head of biceps more through the front. As we work our way further down with some of the more common ones, we're looking in and around the elbow. You've got tennis elbow, which is on the outer part. That's obviously one of the most consistent ones when we're talking about elbows. And then you've got your golfer's elbow, which is more on the inner part of the elbow, which is less common, but still occurs every so often. As we work our way further down, another quite common tendinopathy is a, the gluteal tendinopathy. So usually on the outer parts of our hips. Uh, as well as that, you're looking at hamstring tendinopathy. So hamstrings are quite interesting in the sense that they're usually more higher up rather than further down. To, so they're more towards the hip than they are towards the knee. Uh, as we work our way further down, you've got patella tendinopathy, which is below the kneecap. And then finally, you've got your Achilles tendinopathy, again, a really common one. Plantar fasciitis can be considered a tendinopathy. The tissue itself is not necessarily a tendon, but it is treated much the same way as a tendinopathy. And in some cases, it can be considered a continuation of the calf. So it can be combined in a tendinopathy discussion. So what are the common treatments when we're talking about tendinopathy? So first off, I'll talk about the ones that are quite consistent for a, people, a vast majority of tendons and a vast majority of people. And then I'll start talking about the ones that are a little bit more specific to certain people or that work for some people and not others. So the first one to consider is rest. Now, when I'm talking about rest, I'm not talking about doing nothing for two or three weeks. More often than not, it's just activity modification, adjusting that activity, reducing that activity to a point that the tendon will tolerate. So for instance, if you're going running three times a week, it might be that you're going running once a week, or it might be reducing how much running you're doing or walking, whatever it may be that's, that has led to this point. The idea is that we want to maintain a certain amount of load to help the tendon help itself, but not continue that overload process. It can be a little bit of a tricky process, but it's usually the first place that we'll start. Another thing that we'll consider is using uh, ice or ice packs. This is different from person to person. It is quite common that we can have swelling in the early stages of tendinopathy. It's not the case for everyone and ice won't help everyone. So if you're not finding this helpful, I wouldn't keep pushing it, but it can be helpful for some people in those early stages as pain relief. And then the big one is, is exercise itself. So once we've sort of gone through a period of rest or a period of activity modification, we've found either there's been some improvement or no improvement, we then need to consider exercise. Now the exercise might be different to what you were doing before. The idea is more often not that it's strengthening exercise. So if strengthening exercise is what caused you that issue in the first place, it might be doing different exercises. If it was a different type of exercise, it would be looking at specific strength exercises to build up the strength of that muscle, but also to help bring on that, that good tendon response and help that tendon help itself by normalizing the load going through the tendon and help settling it down. So there are a few other options for tendinopathies. These are a little bit more hit and miss, so they're definitely helpful for some people, but they're not helpful for everyone. So some of these include some things like shockwave therapy. So shockwave therapy is the use of a machine that transmits high frequency sound waves through an applicator head into the tendon. And the idea is that it's prompting a, a healing response. Now it's definitely helpful for some people. The evidence is a little bit mixed how helpful it is or how it's working, but it definitely is helpful for some people. The other things to consider are injections as well, steroid injections or PRP injections. These injections are usually quite expensive and can be a little bit hit and miss as well. The final option is surgery. The thought process is, is that by cutting out the degenerative part of the tendon that's been causing issues, you really want to make sure you've given exercise a red hot crack before you're doing those types of surgeries. <laughs>